Hey, good morning. How you doing out there? God bless everyone. Listen, be empowered, be encouraged. Tackle the day. How you are doing? Welcome to a moment of empowerment. This is your host, Miguel Ramos. I am your empowerment coach. I am your motivational speaker. I'm your transformational coach, baby. This is it. It's me. Doesn't get any better than this, right? <laughs> Listen, tackle the day. This is a moment of empowerment. We come together to give you advice to give you speech, to speak to you, to pump you up, to motivate you, whatever it is that you can tackle, not just the day, but listen, become the better entrepreneur, become the better minister, become the better leader, become the better you in life, whatever it is, listen, we're going to talk about it across the board. I want to let you know just a little bit about me. I'm not just, you know, a leadership developer. I'm not just a transformational coach. I'm not just an empowerment guru. I'm not just a motivational speaker, amen, but I'm also a relationship counselor. You know, I've been doing many, many counseling concerning relationships couples, singles, you know, of every ethnicity, every background, you know, and I've learned a lot in uh, my years of counseling, you know, so, you know, yesterday we kind of started speaking about the art of communication, how to perfect that art of communication, and communication goes across the board, you know, not only is communication good for your relationship, but when you really master the art of communication, uh, you become a, a, a better orator, you know, in your speaking engagement, you become a better communicator, whether it's in your job, whether it's as a CEO in corporate America, or even in your ministry, if you're a, a clergy or somehow a spiritual leader, or just an influential benefactor of your community. So communication helps a lot. So so for this week, this forum, I'm going to focus a little bit more about relationship. You know, if you are single, if you are married, if you're dating, if you've been married for many years or you're just starting to get, you know, engaged or whatever it is, I want to speak to you all about relationship. Um, my wife and myself, we have many, many experience in, in, in relationship. You know, her before we met, her and her singleness, me and my singleness, you know, we came together. We've been married for 12 beautiful years and still counting every day is like a blessing. As a matter of fact, you know, from a relationship experience that we've had, my wife wrote a book. It's called Life Lessons Over Overcomer. You know, check her out, AnnetteRamos.com. You know, it's on Amazon. It's on our website, Life Lessons Over 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 an Overcomer. You know, such an awesome, awesome book. You know, <laughs> it's a little shameless plug right there. But listen, buy her book. I guarantee you is going to bless you. So let's speak about communication. I want to tell you today, you know, if maybe you're having trouble uh, communicating with your partner, communicating with your, you know, your, if you're a couple, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, or your wife, your husband, maybe you're having a problem. Maybe every time when you come together, always end in an argument. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever kind of like walked it's like walking around eggshells concerning your partner because you don't want to say it the wrong way or last time you said it, it was a big blow up or whatever. And now you're saying, you know, I don't want to, you know, rub them the wrong way or whatever. So if you're having that situation, if you're having that problem that you're trying to communicate or you want to communicate, but it always ends in, in, in a blow up, it always ends in trouble. Then listen, I'm going to give you today seven simple steps to improve your communication in your relationship. Seven simple steps to improve communication in your relationship, right? And then later on, we're gonna go. I have one of my 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 viewers, one of our very very beautiful talented viewers. You know, they asked me a very great question, and I want to share that question because I believe it's gonna help everybody. You know, uh, in relationship. You know, so it, it's just an awesome question, and I want to share that with you. But nevertheless, let's go. Let's get started because you know your boy don't have that much time, and I want to get as much information as I can to you all. But I want to empower you here in a moment of empowerment, right? So let's go. So, you know, we tend to want to communicate and convey our thoughts. You know, that's what communication is, is conveying your thoughts, your opinions to the other party. But I want to let, I want to let you know something. Listen, you know, communication is not just rah, 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 blah, 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 blah. It's not just sounds and words coming from your mouth. No, I told you, you communicate with your body more than you do verbally, right? So communication, watch this. Communication is only achieved when understanding arrives at the other party. In other words, if there is no understanding acquired from the other party, then there is no communication. So communication is a bilateral situation. So you put words out there, you put mannerisms, you put certain signs and signal. If the other person does not arrive to an understanding of what you're trying to convey, 
There's no communication. See, the word communication, commune, commune, commune. Well, that's what the word, we get community, we get co commune, you know, when we commune with God, when we commune with one another, we have communion. It talks about a unity between two parties, commune, right? A unity between two parties. And it also talks about action, getting commute, commute, right? Getting from one place to another. So if understanding is not arrived or is not achieved, then <laughs> look at somebody and say, you have not communicated with me. You know, a lot of things are lost in lack of communication. Well, oh, you didn't tell me. No, they did tell you. You probably misunderstood, right? So there's a lot of things concerning communication. And with that being said, Sometimes when you're communicating and you're trying to put forth your opinion and your thought, you tend to think of yourself more than the other person. And when your opinion, excuse me, when your opinion is not achieved or is not acquired, then we tend to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. We tend to get mad. We tend to get upset. You know, oh, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. You never do this and that. And we start being criticism. Uh, we start being uh, critiquing or we start criticizing one another. And then that's where, you know, the mugs start flying, the books start flying, you know, all kinds of things here and there. So again, like I told him, I gave you seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Seven simple steps to improve your communication in your relationship, right? And we have to understand that this goes across the board. It's not just for your relationship, you know, personally, you know, with your partner. But listen, maybe you have a best friend. Maybe you're having problem communicating with your mother or your father. Maybe you're having uh, communicating with your siblings. Uh, you know, communication goes across the board. It's not just in a love relationship. It can be in any kind of relationship. Maybe you're trying to convey something to your employer or your employees. And this is the best way to communicate, right? Number one, number one is seek to understand before trying to be understood. Seek to understand before trying to be understood. See, everybody wants to be considered. Listen, what about my needs? Eddie, what about you? What have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately, right? <laughs> Eddie Murphy, right? <laughs> so everybody wants their feelings to be considered. You have to understand that you're going to have to take the sacrifice to Understand and consider others before they consider you. So when the person is speaking or when you're speaking to a person, try to understand the person uh, before you're understood. Try to get in that person's shoes. Try to say, you know, be curious about their situation. Maybe they really genuinely don't understand what you're saying. You know, everybody does not have the same level of intellect and the same level of understanding. So, you know, if you're trying like case in point, you know, I am a teacher at heart. I love to teach people, whether it is from teaching them how to use a technological device to teaching them how to do something in their job, right? And sometimes the person may not get what you're trying to teach them right then and there. People have different way of understanding and also learning. Some are, if they learn by listening, some learn by seeing, some learn by being hands-on. And you're trying to teach somebody and you're getting now frustrated. Try to understand why that person is getting frustrated. Maybe you're speaking a little bit too fast. Uh, listen, I'm guilty of that. I know sometimes I can speak way too fast, but that's because I get excited. But nevertheless, <laughs> no, no excuses. But take your time with that person. Understand, try to understand where they're coming from. Try to understand what level of intellect that you're operating with. Try to understand which way uh, they learn. So uh, try to be, uh, try to understand the person before you're understood, right? When you create these patterns of understanding, then what happens is that you don't disappoint yourself when you're trying to communicate. That is the biggest frustration that comes with communicating. You're already in your mind, you're perceiving that this person is going to get you like that. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. That's Miguel Ramos. You know, he's very good. He'll understand me right away. Let me tell him A, B, and C. Listen, if I can tell you the number of times when somebody's been trying to help me out, lead me, direct me, and they say something and I'll be like, hmm? You know, I feel like Scooby-Doo. What was that, You know, <laughs> and sometimes I just don't understand. You know, you're coming from a different perspective. But a good coach would try to, you know, uh, understand that person before they're understood themselves. Right, right? So let's keep going. Number two, deuces. Number two. Number two is slow down your communication to truly hear your partner. Slow down your communication to truly, truly hear your partner. Sometimes we can get so excited, I just said that, uh, with our communication. 
And we tend to ramble it off. We tend to just, you know, uh, put it out there. Or maybe you have been, you know, with your partner for a long time. You know, if you've been married, you've been married for a couple of years. And you're already perceiving, oh, that person already knows my character. They know what I'm trying to say. They know what I'm trying to convey. And, you know, you slur your words. Or you just, you know, give it in broken up sentences. Or it's almost kind of like, man, you should have known. No, listen, don't assume. We understand that great saying, right? Don't assume. A-S-S-U-M-E, right? Don't assume because you wind up making an ass out of you and me. Oops, excuse me, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So don't assume, you know, take your time, you know, slow down your communication because what's happened also when you go fast, when you communicate fast, a lot of things sometimes are lost in the communication. Your mind can be telling you what to say, but your lips cannot be moving as fast as what your mind is trying to put out. So what happens is that you miss some information, the person that you're trying to convey that understanding to does not get the full understanding, there's a miscommunication in the miss, they do the thing wrong, and then you get upset. Now in your mind, you're archiving and you're recollecting, you're saying, I did say that, but your lips probably did not register it. And the person will say, no, you never said that. You know how many, you know how many arguments I have had diffused in counseling, you know, with couples many a time because, you know, a person was trying to convey one thing and then the recipient said, well, I never heard that. Well, yeah, well, do it again. Oh, that's all it takes. Big blobs, big, you know, controversies over one word that was misplaced or, or not said at all, right? So... Take your time in communicating. Another aspect of communicating fast that is really not good is that when you tend to be, uh, when you tend to criticize one another and you tend to go faster, then what happens is that believe it or not, you start to attack each other. You start to attack each other. Case in point, let's say you, you're communicating with your partner and your partner says something about you that really bothers you. Then what you do is you're going to say something right back. Then that person is going to say something right back. And now you're going tit for tat, tit for tat. And it's almost like playing that verbal tennis back and forth. You're trying to see who can hurt each other the most or who could be literally the one the most. And you're saying so many things so fast that when the argument dies down, when the fire dies down, you don't even remember half of the things that you said. And sometimes that can be very hurtful because then the next time you communicate, you can say, well, remember last time you said this, this, and that, you said this about me? And you'd be like, I don't even remember. Well, the reason you don't remember is because you were communicating so doggone fast, right? Slow down, enunciate, think about what you're going to say. I always say this, and do this exercise when you're communicating. If you're telling it to yourself like you're telling it to somebody else and it affects you, don't say it. In other words, if you're going to say a word that's going to be demeaning, belittling, is going to hurt somebody, if you would say it to yourself, then go ahead and say it. But if you wouldn't say it to yourself, then don't say it at all. You know, avoid the words always, never. It seems like that when we are doing something, you never speak to me. You always do this. Avoid those words. Listen, you're going to do yourself a justice, a, a, a great deal of justice if you do that. Avoid those words. It's not always and never. It seems like that because of an area of neglect. But always and never, listen, always and never are a long time. I guarantee you that you was not being, you weren't being treated like that for a long time, right? So number two, remember, slow down your communication to truly hear your partner. I'm about to do this one right now, right? <laughs> Talk a little fast sometimes. Listen, I'm getting there. So slow down your communication to truly hear your partner or your recipient, whoever you're communicating with, right? Number three, right? Trice, three, three, tres. Number three, be curious about your partner's perspective. Oh, this is an awesome exercise. Be curious about your partner's perspective, especially if you are, you know, the opposite sex. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to try to be curious and try to convey and understand what the other person is going through. Remember, I spoke about yesterday, men and women communicate very differently. So what's going to happen is that you're going to try to do your best to be curious about how that person is feeling. For example, if a person is feeling down or feeling depressed and you're trying to communicate with that person, what do we always say? The first thing we say when we see somebody down or depressed, we say, what's wrong with you, right? And if the person does not respond back right away, then we get frustrated. We say, well, I'm asking you what the heck is wrong with you. You're not saying this. I try. And we get upset because the person is not responding. However, be curious about what the person is going to. They could be trying to process 
a hurtful situation. They could be trying to process a big decision that they're trying to go through. They could be trying to process how to open up themselves to you in a response of what you just asked. So be curious, you know, what is my partner going through? You know, what is my wife, uh, um, you know, thinking about? You know, what is my friend feeling right now in this situation, you know, as, um, as they're going through this? You know, be curious about them. I understand you want to jump in and ask them all kinds of questions because you want to know the situation. You want to know who did it, when they did it, how they did it. You know, we all the who, what, when, and how's about, about it. But take your time. Be curious. You know, think, ponder. You know, man, you know, she's very depressed. I wonder what she's thinking. I wonder what she's going through right now. You know, he's very bumped. I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he's going through right now. Try to be curious about that person. In your curiosity, I guarantee you that you will... Um, sympathize with that person. You would understand what you are jumping into the conversation. When you get ready to conversate with each other and communicate, you're jumping into the conversation with an open heart and an open mind, helping you to understand a little bit more. Then when those questions are answered, then aha moments come to you and you can better understand your spouse or your partner or your friend or whoever you're communicating with at that point in time. Amen. So number three, be curious about your partner's perspective. Right? Be curious about your partner's perspective, what they're going through. Number four, cuatro, right? Four points, right? To a square. Number four, recognize your emotional triggers and learn to self-soothe. Recognize your emotional triggers and learn to self-soothe. Now, I spoke uh, a while back. I spoke about, you know, trigger points in your life. And what trigger points in your life are those issues that have not been addressed in life. Let's say issues from childhood, issues from traumatic situation, issues from past relationship. And when those issues are not uh, handled or not, they don't heal, what happens is they tend to be almost like, like um, trigger points. You know, somebody, your partner may say something and it sparks you off, you know, like, oh, you know I'm sensitive about that. You know I don't like when they speak about this. You know I told you that and I didn't tell anybody else and now you're saying that in front of people. You know, those are the what we call those emotional triggers. So recognize your own emotional triggers that when you are conversating with one another, it's almost like you're prepping yourself, you're soothing yourself for that. So let's say if your partner says something in relationship to us, an emotional trigger that you have. Know and understand that that person is not saying it on purpose. Now, if they're saying it on purpose, you would, have, you would know in the heat of the moment in that relationship. But if you're genuinely com communicating and conversating to improve your relationship and a person says something of the sort, you know, don't take it personal. So brace yourself, soothe yourself. In other words, you know, prepare yourself. In communication, listen, words fly. Words are thrown out there. Sometimes you're trying to prove a point and you can use you use the only the best analogy that you use. And sometimes that analogy can involve a very similar situation that you've been into. Don't think that everybody is always out to get you. Don't think that everybody is always out to hurt you. You know, it's just an illustration. So soothe yourself before that happens. Brace yourself. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus tells Peter, listen, I want to pray for your faith. Because there's going to come a situation where the world is going to knock you down. But Peter, you stand back up and be girded in your faith. And then when you strengthen, you strengthen your brother. Right? So what he meant by that is that he didn't say that he wasn't going to fall. He was saying, listen, brace yourself. So in other words, you prepare yourself for why, what might or might not happen. Also, when dealing with emotional triggers, um, you know, understanding that if something is said, then listen, put it right out there in the table. You know, if they say something about, you know, an emotional trigger, let's say you have a problem with education. Maybe you didn't complete all your education and the conversation is talking about education and something is said about education. It doesn't concern you. But if it hurts you, then say that. Well, baby, you know, you know how I feel about that. Or, you know, I, I once felt, you know, this way about that or this way about this. So, you you know, that makes me feel a little bit sensitive and I pray that I can overcome that. You know, so there were, that, therefore, you're conveying to your partner that that is a sensitive issue about you and your partner could say, oh, forgive me, I didn't mean it that way, but this is what I was trying to convey, right? So put it out there. Don't just bottle it up. Don't just say, man, she, she knows better. She knows that I have a problem with this. She, he knows that I have a problem with that. No, put it out there. You know, uh, honey, you know, I, I have a problem with that. You know, I'm still trying to work on it. You know, maybe you can help me out, but you know, just... You know, let's let's use a different terminology. Oh, okay, yeah, no problem. I didn't mean it towards you. I meant it this way. Okay, good. You know, no problem. So, 
you know, recognize your emotional triggers and learn to self soothe. Mm, awesome. Woo, man, these are all great. Aren't these all good? These are all great. Listen, there's so much more. You know, I'm going to put a little shameless plug real quick. You know, I, I've been working with people in relationship, you know, for years, you know, as a spiritual guide, you know, as a leader, you know, as a, a business partner. <clears throat> Excuse me. I help people in relationship all the time. I always find myself helping somebody, whether it's in their marriage, you know, whether it's, you know, in their relationship where, you know, I always find myself <clears throat> helping people in that area. So, that is what area that, believe it or not, is dear to my heart. I love helping people in that situation. So if you want to work with me, listen, reach out to me, you know, look for me, uh, call me up, whatever it is. Listen, I'll be willing to work with you. I do, you know, spiritual guidance, all kinds of counseling and all that stuff, you know, to help you out. So, but nevertheless, let's keep going, right? Just a little shameless plug right there. You know, I got to promote your boy. Uh -huh. Listen, number five. Practice using empathy. Practice using empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is to put yourself in your partner's shoes, right? To be understanding, you know? Yes, we're curious about what they're going through, but also try to understand, you know? Uh, try to understand it from a woman's perspective if you're a man. Try to understand it from a man's perspective if you're a woman, you know? Uh, for example, I'm going to give you a prime example, you know? As men, you know, oh, you know, man up, you're strong, carry this, carry that, you know, you can handle it, you can do this, you can get that, you can get this, you can pay the bill, you know, take care of the kids, do all that, you know, believe it or not, you know, men get overwhelmed, we get overwhelmed, we feel like crying like babies, you know, you, you ever seen a man fight and, you know, eyes just welled up and, you know, tears go, because believe it or not, we were told not to cry our whole life and we feel like crying. Listen, as a woman, you know, as a woman, you think, okay, oh, you ought to know this, you ought to know that, you know, you ought to stay home, you ought to take care of the kids, you know, you ought to go to work, you ought to be independent, you know, listen, women as well, you know, women are now living in a society where they're becoming overwhelmed, they're expecting to do everything, you know, go to work, you know, pay the bills, be the executive, be the CEO, be the principal, be the manager, then come home, make the dinner, clean the house, take care of the kids, and also please your husband. Listen, it, it can get overwhelming, like, ah, come on, you know, try to understand each other, be uh, uh, empathetic to one another, you know, understand each other, you know, always try to encourage but not just encourage to help out each other and understand that person if if you are a man or a woman listen at the end of the day we all are humans and we all have emotions and we all get stressed out and we all get tired and we all get weary understand me from a human point of view not just as a woman not just as a man or if you're understanding me as a man and as a woman listen do your research and do it right amen don't think that women are just, you know, one-dimensional creature. Don't think that men are just one-dimensional creature. No, we're all different dimensional, right? We're all from different cultures, different backgrounds. So if you're going to understand me, <laughs> do your homework, right? <laughs> that's what I tell people. Listen, if you're going to do something wrong, do it wrong right, right, man? So <laughs> that's number five. Practice using empathy to foster a closer connection. Practice using empathy to foster and bring together and incubate a closer relationship, right? By understanding one another. Number six, let me see. I think I got two more. I think I got two more. <clears throat> I'm going to bless you. Number six is listen for hidden unmet uh, need or emotion. Listen for hidden unmet needs or emotion. This is so good. I'm going to tell you why. Most of the time when we verbalize and when we communicate something is to, uh, I want to say, get something in return. For example, you don't just communicate for the, sake, for the sake of just making noise. You communicate because there's something that you want. There's something that you're trying to acquire, something that you're trying to get. And sometimes we say a lot of things nonchalantly like, you know, oh, you know, oh, you know, that's a nice dress. Or you say stuff like that, man, I, I, I'm thirsty. I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, I'm old school. I'm a movie head. White man can't jump. You know, remember Rosie told uh, uh, um, Billy, you know, oh, I'm thirsty. And Billy went and got her some water, you know. And then she was like, you know, when I'm thirsty, I don't mean that I'm thirsty. You know, I want to quit. Anyway, <laughs> whatever, right? We say stuff because we want a satisfaction after that. So listen to your spouse. Listen to what they're saying. You know, even when they convey things, you know, it, it is them asking for something. You may not have the resources or the means. <laughs> you may not have the resources or the means to, to, um, 
to achieve or please that person right then and there. But listen, work towards it. As you work towards it, you can please that person. You can help out. Go out your way. You know, relationship, whether it's marriage, whether it's, you know, business, whether it's friendship, whether it's siblings, mother, father, whatever. Relationship is all about going out your way to please the other person. I'm not saying that you got to lose yourself in that, but it is an investment. Right, and if you don't give, you're gonna bankrupt that relationship. Right, so so listen for that hidden unmet emotion, that need, and then try to meet it. You know, you are with your partner because there is something, there is a quality in you that that person sees, and that's why they're with you. Whether you're a friend. You're my friend because there is something about you that I admire that I want to receive from you. You're my husband, you're my wife, you're my boyfriend, you're my girlfriend because there's something in you that I want from you, right? So so you can meet that need, just ask how, you know, get different ways. Listen, man, every once in a while, bring flowers for your ladies just because. Just because type of flower. Just because type of flowers are more valuable than flowers on Mother's Day, on anniversaries, on, on birthdays. Because those are expected. It's the unexpected things that are more valuable, right? So, do things like that. Women, listen, you got that boyfriend or that husband, whatever. Buy him a shirt. Buy him a pair of sexy underwears, you know. He may not fit into them, but listen, that's your fantasy. Listen, I want to see you in this tonight before we go to bed, you know. Listen, don't mind me. I'm talking about everything across the board. We're being real, right? So, listen, just go out. That lets them know you were thinking about me. Think about it. Your whole day was hectic. You had trouble at work. You had trouble with your children. You had trouble at school. You stressed out. And all this, you come home with some flower. Or you come home with a nice shirt or whatever. And, and what it says is you were thinking about me. Your day was hell, but you had me in your mind, in your heart. And that says a lot about the person that you're with, right? So, Listen, I have seven points. I got to stop right here. We'll join over the time. I want to get to this question. One of our viewers asked a very, very important question. I want to get to this, you know, and then I want to encourage this individual and I want to continue to encourage you. And then we're going to conclude our video, right? We have so much more. If you want more empowerment, uh, you know, uh, uh, situation, more empowerment and motivational verses, quotes, whatever it is, listen, check me out. Facebook, Miguel Ramos business page. Also, listen, we're linked up to YouTube very soon miguelramos.com oh yeah it's coming right there i'm super pumped super excited working with so many great people we're putting all this together i'm telling you there's something awesome that's coming you got to prepare yourself because the wave is forming in itself right so but nevertheless anonymous viewer right awesome viewer awesome viewer know this person uh personally awesome awesome great person um, they asked, right, we were talking about yesterday, and I said something in the segment, I said that women that tend to be independent repel, uh, uh, repel certain men, right? So the question was, if my independency, and I'm paraphrasing, if my independency is repelling uh, men and I'm trying to attract, how can I become more attractive to these type of men? And we're not talking about physical attraction, you know, because, you know, she's a fox, right? <laughs> so... What I'm trying to talk about is that when women become independent, listen, listen, if women, if you are independent, you are the go-getter, you making them six, seven figure income, listen, whatever, you know, that's great. You know, that's awesome. Do not succumb or do not be insecure in your overachieving just because a man is insecure in that. However, however, when you're trying to attract that man and you are the independent woman, listen, be aloof, be vulnerable sometimes, you know, be vulnerable sometimes, you know, there's nothing more attractive like a damsel in distress, you ever remember those 1950s, 1960s movie, the woman is trying to cross the sidewalk and there's a portal and the man takes his jacket off and he puts the portal, uh, the jacket of the portal and she crosses over, or the, the, there's always the classic, right, the man is, is the hero, the woman, you know, is being attacked, mugged, whatever, and he comes to her aid, right, there's nothing more sexy women than a, than a woman that needs a man. So you can be independent, you can be confident. I'm not telling you to come down your confident, but be aloof, be vulnerable, you know. Just go out there and say like, oh, I don't know how to do this. No, I'm playing around. I don't do that. <laughs> you know, just just not that you're being a hypocrite, 
but ask for help every now and then, you know, call that person and say, you know what, can you give me a hand with this? Or, you know, when you're in the supermarket, you know, and you're seeing somebody, hey, listen, you know, have you ever tried these vegetables? What do you think about this? You may never know. Oh, you know, I'm actually a chef. I'm actually a cook. You know, I think spark up the conversation. You know, most conversations are sparked up when somebody is in need. You know, you're over there. You're getting your coffee. Ask somebody, have you seen the creamer? Have you seen the sugar? I need help finding it. You know where it's at, but you're trying to spark up a conversation. Men love to problem solve. When a man is needed, they're going to be intrigued and they're going to be interested. Maybe you're putting yourself out there, you know, and they're not seeing you, but spark up a conversation. Say something. When you go to the gas station, you may know, you may be that independent woman, know how to pump your gas. Ask for help. Listen, can you help me pump this gas? Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you so much. You know, ask questions. Questions about things you don't know, you know. I'm going to give you some topics that men love to talk about. Sports. You don't have to be a sports guru, but if you don't, the less you know, the better it is because men like to tell you about sport. Well, you know, this is Michael Jordan. You know, he's like the greatest of all. Who's Michael Jordan? What? You don't know who Michael Jordan is? You know, spark up conversation. Men love to talk about sports. Men love to talk about machinery, mechanics. You know, men love to talk about engineering. And the new one, men love to talk about technology. So find an interest in one of those four qualities. And spark up a conversation. Come up to the person. We're living in a society now because of intimidation. You know, men tend to not approach women as we used to anymore. But if you spark up the conversation, if you come with a question, you're being aloof, but at the same time, you're not being needy. You know, you're not coming and chasing, you know. And, and then I want to say this to encourage you. Be confident in your singleness. Be confident in your independence. You got to be happy with you. If you being happy, if you're not happy with you, what makes you think being happy with another person is going to make you happy, right? So embrace your hour of singleness, you know, be you, be independent, be strong, you know, uh, 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 pamper yourself, have your time, your your dynamic time to encourage yourself and, and have no agenda, no commitment. And listen, that's awesome to live like that, you know, that's great. Enjoy your single time. And then when you're ready to embark and embrace that relationship, at least you'll be 100 within yourself, right? But continue you know, be aloof, be vulnerable, you know, put it out there, ask for help. Don't always be a know-it-all. And I guarantee you that you'll start attracting um, different, you know, men if you're a woman or different women if you are a man. Well, for men, it's different. You know, men love a confident, you know, man. But nevertheless, we'll continue to talk about it. But listen, you have a question, you know, post it on my page, you know, send me, you know, a, a message, whatever, on my messenger, Miguel Ramos, whatever it is. But listen... We're coming to a conclusion. Uh, if it was up to me, I would talk to you all day. I would encourage you all day. I'll be in your ear all day. But listen, this is Miguel Ramos. This is your host for our moment of empowerment. Listen, I'm your motivational speaker. I'm your transformational trainer. I am your empowerment coach. Doesn't get any better than this. Reach out to me. You want to work with me? I am for hire. Look for me. Many great things coming, not just in my life, but in your life as well. Tackle the day is Tuesday. Week's just getting started, but that's where it's good. Tackle it fresh. Be empowered. Be motivated. Go ahead and do you till we meet again. Signing off, this is Miguel Ramos. Peace.